Don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. Don't know much about science books. Don't know much about the French I took. But I do know that I love you. And I know that if you love me too, what a wonderful world this could be. Don't know much about geography. Don't know much trigonometry. Don't know much about algebra. Don't know what a slide rule is for. But I do know one and one is two. And if this one could be with you, what a wonderful world this could be. Now I don't claim to be an A student, but I'm trying to be. And maybe by being an A student, baby, I can win your heart for me. Don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. Don't know much about science books. Don't know much about the French I took. But I do know that I love you. And I know that if you love me too, what a wonderful world this could be. But I know that one and one is two. And if this one could be with you, what a wonderful world this could be.
bum dum 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 by my Coney Island. Just like leading wow. this one. When it's over, oh boy, we get a good faster day to be than we go. Rich men, poor men, better than me. Doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. We all are bound for. Goodbye, my Coney Island baby. And it's gone. Love love my honey. I'm gonna go. Never gonna see you. I'm gonna sail up on that ferry boat, do, do, do. never to return again. Return again. So goodbye, farewell. So, so long, forever. I hate this part. Boom. 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 Boom.
Welcome. In the interest of safety, we would like to take this time to advise you of our emergency procedures and to point out the location of the exits. You will be informed by an announcement or the sounding of the fire alarm system in the event of an emergency requiring evacuation. In the event of an emergency, we ask that you leave in a calm and orderly fashion through the exits nearest you, which are identified by exit signs. Thank you. Yeah, I really do like this. The students have so much freedom, they can do whatever they want, it seems like. First of all, imagine IT, I think that's great, because kids, they, they see all the different kinds of fields, so they, don't, they see more than robots, they see different experiments and all that, so it gets them interested in all different kinds of science. And you know, it's great that we hold it here, I, I mean, this is a great place. I, I love going to Imagine IT, I love going to the robotics competitions here. And you know, I, we do, a lot of students do go to RIT after they graduate high school, which is great because it's a great school for engineering, you learn a lot, you get a great career. And it, it just amazes me how great this place is. Yeah, I feel like a part of it, because when I grow up, I want to come here. I want to like, invent stuff. Oh, I've not been before, but it was real fun. I got to see a lot of cool inventions that I've never seen before. A lot of things that have compelled me to go to this college. And I've always been interested in developing games and stuff, and I've seen so many games that have been developed, and I've been just really intrigued by that. It's really big, <laughs> and there's a lot to do. Like, they have like a bunch of little things to do. Like. Just walking around and seeing so many things, it's actually kind of crazy. Especially if there's a lot of high school students coming and they'll want to pursue further, they can like create things that are going to be in our future later too. I think that um, Imagine, it's, it's a very cool experience because I'm very, I'm very much into art and you can actually do it yourself and it's not just they're showing you things. Like if you go to a regular art gallery, um, it's hands-on and you can do a lot just independently and also the inventions that they're showing.
Good afternoon. I am Dr. Jeremy Hafner, RIT's Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. I am happy to welcome everyone to this convocation for new students and families, especially our guests of honor, our new students. Hang on. Oh. Hang on one second. Here we go. It's a great day for the hashtag RIT Academic Convocation. And post. All right. We are so delighted that you have chosen RIT for your journey into higher education. We begin this journey with a formal ceremony which features several components of a vibrant academic community. Academic regalia, our mace, and a formal procession, to name a few. And what a journey it will be, filled with friends, and faculty, frenetic times and fun, a fantastic intellectual journey. So let's get started. Please join me and stand for the national anthem led by 8-Beat Measure, one of our many student music groups, and deaf sign performers Shaylee Fogelberg, Jonathan Petermann, Nick Shaw, and Byron Evans. Thanks again to the members of 8-Beat Measure and our deaf sign performers. I also want to acknowledge our bagpipers and drummers, Lex Sleeman, who doubles here at RIT as Associate Director of Intercollegiate Athletics and NCAA Compliance, and his colleagues, members of the Gates Keystone Club Police Pipes and Drums, and the RIT Pep Band, another of our musical student groups who entertained you as you arrived for this ceremony. Let's all give them a hearty RIT round of applause. <laughs> Speaking of hearty, I'm sure you noticed the boisterous group of people greeting the students as they entered the field house. They are faculty and staff, many of whom are also RIT alums who gathered to welcome you all as the newest members of the RIT family and to express how much they look forward to working with you. Thanks to the RIT faculty, staff, alumni chapter for coordinating what we have come to call the Tiger Walk. And to our new students, today you did the Tiger Walk. When you go across the commencement stage four or five years from now, you'll do the Tiger Swagger and Strut. 
to all our participants of the Tiger Walk, thank you for a high-spirited, high-energy welcome. No one can beat you when it comes to making our students feel welcome. Now, RIT is the proud home of the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, one of only two institutions of higher education in the United States funded by the federal government for the education of deaf and hard of hearing students. NTID, as it is known on campus, is one of our nine colleges and supports more than 1,200 students who utilize the outstanding services of our faculty, professional interpreters, captionists, and other staff. We appreciate the fact that this ceremony, as well as all of our ceremonies, are enriched both by real-time captioning and by the presence and expertise of our professional sign language interpreters. Let's give the interpreters and our real-time captionists a uh, uh, round of applause for their dedication to their important work. Now, there are a few special guests and members of the platform party who joined us today to celebrate your arrival. Members of the RIT Board of Trustees provide their vision and expertise in leading RIT. Please join me in thanking them for their efforts. Trustees, thank you. Our alumni are the lifeblood of our university. They are here to help and support you throughout your journey at RIT, and they look forward to you joining their ranks when you graduate a few years from now. Please join me in welcoming Orlando Ortiz, class of 2009 and representative of the Alumni Association Board of Directors. Orlando, will you please stand? We thank him. We thank him and our more than 114,000 alumni worldwide for their constant support and encouragement. Next, I ask that Dr. Hussein Shah, Muhammad, Shah Mohammed and Dr. Ryan Raffelli and Dr. Kevin McDonald and Dr. Hector Flores to please stand. Gentlemen. <laughs> Dr. Shah Mohammed, who led this afternoon's procession carrying the mace, is a professor in the School of Mathematical Sciences in the College of Science and chair of the Academic Senate. He is here today representing the RIT faculty. Dr. Raphael is an Associate Provost and Vice President for Research. Dr. McDonald serves as Associate Provost and Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion. And Dr. Flores is the Dean of the Graduate Studies. Thank you all, gentlemen, for joining us at this celebration. Now, many parents and other family members met our outstanding deans in college meetings earlier today. I am proud to take this opportunity to introduce them to you again, and for the first time, to our students. Deans, please stand when I call your name and remain standing until all have been introduced. And members of the audience, please hold your applause until that time. Dr. H. Fred Walker, Dean of the College of Applied Science and Technology. Dr. Jacqueline Mazrell, Dean of Saunders College of Business. Dr. Ann Hickey, Interim Dean of the B. Thomas Galisano College of Computing and Information Sciences. Dr. Harvey Palmer, Dean of the Kate Gleason College of Engineering. Dr. Daniel Orndt, Vice President of the Institute of Health Sciences and Technology and Dean of the College of Health Sciences and Technology. Dr. Lorraine Justice, Dean of the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences. Dr. James Weingrape, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts. Dr. James Hall, Executive Director of the School of Individualized Studies, formerly known as the Center for Multidisciplinary Studies. Dr. Gerald Buckley, President of the National Technical Institute for the Deaf and Vice President and Dean at RIT. And Dr. Sophia Magalakis, Dean of the College of Science. Let's give them all a hearty round of applause. As we continue our journey together, you will come to understand that we take our role and responsibility for the academic, 
intellectual, personal, and physical development of you, the class of 2019 and 2020, very seriously. In other words, you are in good hands. Actually, you've already been in the good hands of our superb enrollment management and career services staff who worked tirelessly to bring all of you here, approximately 3,000 first-year students and more than 500 transfer students from across the nation and representing countries from around the globe. Through their efforts, you begin your journey with fellow students who, like yourselves, are bright, ambitious, and eager to learn. Each of you brings a wealth of experiences and talent that will enrich our community. And the entire university appreciates the efforts that the staff from Enrollment Management and Career Services put forth in bringing forward this exceptional class to RIT. It is now my great pleasure and honor that I formally welcome and accept this incoming class of 2015. The good news is you will continue to be in good hands with the staff from Student Affairs. Please join me in a very warm welcome of Dr. Sandra Johnson, our Senior Vice President for Student Affairs. Dr. Johnson, welcome. of scholars who seek knowledge and the formation of shared values. Each of you has a wide range of ambitions and expectations. We do not expect, nor do we want, for you to be alike. We respect you as individuals. To reach your goals, you will need to take steps starting today. Challenge yourself to be engaged. Pay attention 
and ask yourself every day, what can you do to surpass yesterday? Push your comfort zone. Talk to people who have different interests and different backgrounds than you. Make your academic path the path of your dreams, not the convenient or safe route or the dreams of others. And perhaps most importantly, get involved in the life of this vibrant campus. You will have a more meaningful and memorable college experience if you open yourselves to the learning that happens in and out of the classroom. Now I've talked about challenges, but no, you will not do this alone. You will have many people to support you as you find your path and define your goals. To give you a little bit more insight into student life at RIT, I invite you to see a little glimpse yourselves. today's event is that it marks a new beginning and I encourage you to embrace the opportunities to work on behalf of those less fortunate and to lead reform in the economic, social, cultural, political, and technological arenas. As you, our students, consider the ways the world is changing and will change and imagine your place in it, know that your RIT experience will fuel your search for both purpose and meaning. Today is the beginning of your lifelong engagement, students and families, with this great university. And students, when you're feeling overwhelmed, as every single student does, 
Keep in mind, you will survive, and we are here to help. Now, one of the greatest pleasures I have serving as the Senior Vice President for Student Affairs is working closely with students and watching them develop into scholars, entrepreneurs, artists, public servants, teachers, athletes, scientists, CEOs, and inventors. Basically, they are the leaders of tomorrow. Today, you will have the honor of hearing from one of RIT's finest leaders in the making, Nicholas Nick Giordano. Nick is an honors program student with a dual major in political science and management information systems. He has performed in too many performances to mention at RIT, serving as the manager for his co-ed a cappella group, Proof of Purchase, an actor and director of the RIT Players, and founding member of the improv group Work in Progress. He is the creator and the manager of RIT's Goodbye, Goodbye program. And oh, I almost forgot, he's the president of the student government for this academic year. Are you getting a better picture of what an RIT student looks like? Well, good. Please welcome Nick Giordano as he gives you the inside scoop on student life at RIT. How are you guys doing today? What's going on? Can we get a, let's, let's get a little excitement. I'm going to skip any more uh, introductions on me. You've heard enough about me. Also, you've probably done enough icebreakers to last the rest of your life, so we'll just leave it at that. College is the start down your own path of growth. This growth is not just academic, contrary to what you may believe. In fact, this growth encompasses all aspects of your life. Mental, social, physical, emotional. This growth that happens in your classes, it's not just through your classwork. The challenges that you encounter will not just be in class. In fact, if you only strive to get an A in your classes, then you have missed out on one of the greatest opportunities of your life. Because here at RIT, you have the opportunity to grow in every aspect of yourself, every single way. For instance, there's over 200 clubs and organizations on our campus that span every hobby, sport, and community that you can think of. Joining these clubs offers not only a way to find new hobbies and hone your craft, but also to make lifelong friends. I'm talking invite to the wedding party friends when you're older. As well as give you a chance to ascend into leadership roles that will give you valuable managing experience on managing yourself and others that you can't get from a book. And when you look at all the wellness opportunities we have, wellness classes, our gym here, we have uh, sports, bike rental, which comes through SG, it's a little plug of mine, but bike rental, and we uh, have the rock climbing wall as well. All of these opportunities to keep you physically fit means that everyone can get active on our campus. And it's important to remember that as you take your classes, not to forget, you're also here to improve yourself fully and reduce stress while you do it. And as well, all the while, you'll be setting healthy habits for the rest of your life. Let's not forget about the importance of growing yourself mentally and emotionally. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret right now. College is hard. People might have not told you that. College is very hard. It only gets harder from right here. It will never get easier from this moment on. But you know what? You will get stronger. You will get better. You will become more able to handle the challenges that lie between you and your goals. We are all on this path of growth, and most of the time, you won't know where that path takes you. In fact, some of you might not have a path to follow at all. You'll be blazing it yourself. And the most important thing to remember is that the only thing that determines the success that you have here and in the rest of your life is you, your convictions, and your dedication to finding the way. Now, you might be saying, okay, Nick, great, so all I have to do here to succeed is improve myself in every way possible and know exactly what I'm going to do and exactly where I'm going and do it all in four years. 
well, I'm on this metaphorical path or whatever. You know, I'm cold and hungry, definitely hungry, alone. I know, it sounds daunting. But the reality of the situation is that if you have a doubt in your mind that you are not going to be able to make it through here or you're not going to be able to succeed, all you have to do is look around you. Look around you, because we are all a family now. We are all tigers. All the staff, faculty, alumni, and students that you encounter will be ready and willing to guide and help you whenever you need it, just as you should be ready to do the same to them. All in all, you're going to have a blast here at RIT. It's going to be the craziest, best years of your life. And when you look back after you've graduated, you will see just how far you've come and just how far you have to go. And you know what? You go out there and you blaze your tracks. You find that path to growth, and we'll all be here to help you along the way. Go Tigers! Thank you, Nick. I look forward to working with you as you begin your tenure as a student government president. And that Tiger swagger and strut is coming along nicely. Well done. As Nick said, there are scores of opportunities available to you at RIT. But the greatest opportunity ahead of you is the learning that is RIT's hallmark. RIT is blessed with an outstanding faculty, dedicated and committed to help you take full advantage of that opportunity by making sure that the education you receive is rigorous, cutting edge, personal, relevant, and second to no other university experience. Also, dedicated to making sure that you are in good hands, the faculty care deeply about you and your intellectual growth. They will challenge you academically to make sure that that growth occurs. Your obligation is to accept that challenge, to be engaged, and in fact, to challenge them as well. But do so respectfully and thoughtfully because that is how they will treat you. So what exactly can you expect from your educational journey? Here to help answer this question is Joe Williams. Mr. Williams is a lecturer and field experience coordinator in the Department of Criminal Justice in the College of Liberal Arts. And last spring, he was awarded the Outstanding Teaching Award for Non-Tenure Track Faculty, a university-level award that recognizes exceptional faculty who have demonstrated a significant commitment to students and teaching at RIT. Please join me in a warm, hearty RIT welcome to Mr. Joe Williams. Joe? <laughs> well, Laverne, there's a lot of people here today. <laughs> okay, Dr. Dessler, Provost Hafner, Board of Trustees members, uh, distinguished guests, Faculty and staff, students, families, welcome. And you know, before I get started, I, you know, I gotta make a quick comment. So I get this email from Sue Provenzano, my new friend. She says, hey Joe, how'd you like to be the keynote speaker for Convocation? I went, mm, okay. So I called my wife and I said, honey, look at this. And she says, oh sweetie, you're gonna do so fine. I, I, I'm so proud of you. And I said, <laughs> yeah, okay. So I started thinking, right? I said, you know what? This has gotta be Provost Havener's doing. Yeah? And, and I'll tell you why. So one day he comes by my office, you know, shortly after I won the Outstanding Teacher Award, he says, you know, congratulations. You know, he says, so what are you working on? What he didn't realize is that I like to talk a lot. Okay? So he asked me that question, I said, okay. So I says, you know, the uh, Committee on Corrections in New York State Assembly has a brand new chair, and he's putting out some radical legislation. I said, and number two, I said, New York State, we spend billions of taxpayer dollars on the inmates. That's a lot, you know? And I said, and the worst part about it, there's all this violence in prison and people getting stabbed and sexual assaults and people smuggling drugs and guns in. And I said, so, you wanna go to prison? He looked at his watch and he said, well, I must be going now. <laughs> I said, okay. So I'm thinking, right, he probably thought, okay. All right, Joe, uh, you wanna be a funny man? Tell you what I'll do. I'll make you the keynote speaker at Convocation stick you out in front of 6,000 people, and I will watch you squirm. <laughs> so I got two words for you, Mr. Provost. It worked, because I'm nervous as heck standing up here, let me tell you, okay? But now, I, now I, I told my friend, Dawn Murray and Stephanie Rankin, that I wouldn't be nervous, but I am, but I'll, I'll be fine. And I'm just kidding about the Provost. I really appreciate him uh, giving me the opportunity, and anybody else that uh, might have had a hand in this. 
Now, what I want to do is I want to talk to the students. So, uh, you know, time is short here, so I want to lock in. I want you to lock in on me. Now, I'm nobody big and important. Yes, I'm a lecturer, but right now, what I want to do is talk to you as an RIT alumni because I know what it takes to get out of this place, okay? So, we had a guy um, come last year for commencement. His name is William Daniels Phillips. He did an awesome experiment with liquid nitrogen, and he said something I think most people miss, but I caught it. And he said, you know, most speeches at commencement you know, are forgettable. So I said, you know what, that's probably true. So I'm thinking you guys will probably forget these words, but I hope not. So I want you to lock in on me, okay? First of all, I agree with Nick. You guys ought to be really, really happy to be here. Because one thing you need to understand is that RIT and NTID, that's the brass ring, guys. Okay? Doesn't get much better than us. So I know some of you out there are going to say, well, you know, the Ivy League schools. No. We are near the top of the heap. And you should be proud of yourself that you were admitted here. So now, let me repeat something that Nick said, okay? One of the things you must do, guys, is you have to prioritize your time. Time management is absolutely critical here as a student. If you don't do that, you're going to struggle, okay? Now, if you say, well, Professor, I don't know anything about putting together a time management schedule. We have a wonderful academic support center here, okay? And the staff is absolutely awesome. We're talking about the likes of Dan Hickey, Wendy Gilmore, Phyllis Wade, and Robin Riefler, and others I, I can't even name. There's so many, but they're all good. And they're going to want to help you, so make sure you go get the help. Which brings me to another point. See, RIT students, NTID students, you're really smart, right? So when you need help, you probably didn't ask for it. Okay? So back in high school, your professor said, hey, you got a test two weeks from now. And you went, yep. And you waited till the night before and you opened that book up and you got an A, right? Woo! Yeah, I know you did, right? I'm smart. I'm going to RIT. <laughs> you will not be able to do that here. You're going to have to study, guys. There's just no other way to put it. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Second, and something that Nick already alluded to, Eliminate any doubts or fears that you have that you belong here in this family with us. Now look, I know Dan Shelley, and I know Sally Douglas, and they're two of the sharpest people at RIT. Okay, they run the admissions program, so let me look at my cheat sheet because I want to get this right here. Dan Shelley is the Associate Vice President and Director of Undergraduate Admissions, and Sally Douglas is the Senior Director of Admissions. And I've been working with Sally for a long, long time. These are sharp people, and you know what? They got a sharp staff. Talking about the likes of Sheila uh, Cabot, Okay, and Sue Lynn Howard. And they didn't admit you guys because they felt bad for you. They admitted you based on your potential to succeed, and we know you got this. So don't have any doubt in your mind that you belong here. And you know what, as far as fear goes, Dr. Susan Jeffers in her book, Feel the Fear and Just Do It Anyway, she says, look, and I'm paraphrasing here, but she says, anytime you do a new venture, fear is gonna follow you. Like standing on a stage, speaking in front of 6,000 people for the first time in your life and your chest, your heart is about to beat out of your chest. It happens, okay? So make sure that, okay, you're fearful, that's okay, right? So let me get to the third thing here, this is important. Make sure you pick excellent mentors and excellent role models. Now our own Dr. Sandra Johnson, a couple weeks ago, was profiled in our magazine. They did a wonderful piece on her, and even she said, she talked about the value of mentors in her career getting started and going along. It's okay to ask for help, guys. Do that, get wonderful mentors. Now, if you're needy like I am, you got about six or seven mentors. I, I, I don't know where Dr. Howard Ward is, Dr. Kevin McDonald, Dr. Alan Nye, Dr. John Clovis, Dr. Judy Porter, huh? not to mention my wife, okay? The best role model I have, my wife. And also my main man, Dave Watson. So make sure if you're gonna get a role model, get the right person. By the way, sometimes role models aren't necessarily professionals in this field. One of my biggest role models, believe it or not, is my barber. His name is Sharif Bryan. She said, are you a barber? Now, I've been going to this guy for 17 years, and I'll tell you something. This brother has never been to college, but one of the smartest men I've ever met, because when I go to his shop and I leave, I leave inspired, and I want to go out and I want to help people. So one day I was venting to him, and I said, you know, it's really a shame in this world. I said, you know, some parts of the world, we don't have clean drinking water for people. We don't have sufficient food for people to eat, sufficient housing, and I said, you know, it's almost like people would rather tear each other down than to do something to help one another. And he looked at me and he said, listen, those are just loud voices, okay? There are more people out there that actually care. But you tell your RIT students that when they form their little clubs and their little cliques, if you're hanging around people who can't celebrate you for who and what you are and support you, especially when you're down, get rid of them, okay?
And that brings me to the fourth point. You know, I, I love talking. Sometimes I go to inner city schools and I talk to children about the importance of a college education. And one of the things you learn when you do projects like that is that you have to bear your soul to people. So I'm gonna bear my soul to you guys because I'd rather students learn something. And somebody had told me this when I was younger. When I was 18 years old, guys, the biggest mistake I ever made in my life was believing in people who didn't believe in me. See, the thing is that they kick you when you're down, you know, they come in they're critical. You know, I'm talking about those naysayers and those haters. Ah, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Now, here's the issue. You see, sometimes when you hear this negative stuff, it tends to repeat itself over and over again. And then your mind, your subconscious latches onto it. And the first time you make a mistake, your subconscious mind says, aha, you see, you are incompetent. You can't do this. Ah. No, you guard your minds, guys. It is absolutely critical what you think. Now, I listen to a lot of motivational speakers, and one of my heroes is a guy named Earl Nightingale. And if you haven't heard of Earl, you should YouTube him, okay? He's, he's considered the dean of personal development. Yes, it's old, but the message is very powerful. And I want to quote Earl, because this is critical. He says, whatever we plant in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion, will become, one day will become a reality, end quote. You remember that. So if you're hanging around people that are feeding you with this negative stuff, get rid of them, get away from them. Can't do you any good. If you're gonna think about something, students, you think about the brass ring, that RIT symbol, that RIT degree, and you, you work hard for that and you go get that, okay? Now to the parents, I wanna say, on behalf of everybody here at RIT, my professional colleagues, we thank you for bringing your student to us. We will professionally nurture them and care for them. We will challenge them. So you can back off, you don't have to hang over them and worry about them because we know you've put in the values that they need to succeed in the hard work. So I hear you students out there going, hey, professor, take it easy. Somebody's got to pay the tuition. Don't push them too far. <laughs> but I mean, you know, just be there for them. So let me close by saying this. You know, um, you'll probably forget this speech. That's okay. All right, you heard a little bit of it. And I hope that some of the words don't come back to haunt you. But you remember this, you must work hard, you must manage your time, you must believe in yourself, and above all, don't any of you ever repeat the mistake I did, okay? If anybody, don't you ever, ever let somebody tell you what you can't do. If you put the hard work in, you got this. And I'm not just echoing what Nick said, this is the truth, we believe in you. You wouldn't be here otherwise, okay? So you go out, you work hard, and you do what you have to do. And before I go, I want to give a special shout out to my main man, Cameron Shipley from Churchville Chai my main man, Dave Watson, if he's out there, and a very special shout out to my brothers and sisters in the HEOP program. You guys have a good one. Joe, thank you very, very much given us lots to think about as we all start this new journey together. And I'm gonna certainly think twice uh, before I knock on your door again, that's for sure. <laughs> it now gives me great pleasure to introduce RIT's president, Dr. William W. Dessler. He will be followed by our student orientation coordinators, Margot K Dayton, Erica Liskawa, Kristen Hennessy, and Josh Vickerson. They will let you know what comes next during orientation, some exciting opportunities for engagement in the next few weeks, and then we'll close this convocation. So now please join me in welcoming Dr. Dessler, the man who high-fived 3,000 new students uh, just a few moments ago to the podium, Dr. Dessler. Congratulations to all of the first year students and welcome to RIT. I will not sign this speech <laughs> because as you have seen from Sandy's speech, we would be here all day. But it is my pleasure to welcome all students, both new and returning, to RIT. It is also my distinct pleasure 
to welcome all the parents and friends of our students who are here to wish them luck on their educational journey. You know, RIT is truly a category of one university. Where else can you find students on the same campus studying medical photography and engineering? Where else can you find students who are studying business and furniture design working side by side? And where else can you find deaf students and hearing students working together on team projects? It is this unusual combination of right-brainers and left-brainers working together that makes RIT such a special place. And it is the presence on our campus of the National Technical Institute for the Deaf that makes RIT absolutely unique. This kind of intellectual and cultural diversity is available only at RIT. And I think it provides an extraordinary outside the classroom educational opportunity for all of our students. How much you benefit from it, of course, is really up to you. I encourage all of you to first find your footing in your academic studies and then branch outward into the various opportunities for campus engagement that are available to you. It is this opportunity to grow intellectually in areas inside and outside of your major that can make an RIT experience so special. Now in academia, we have the opportunity to serve as examples of how to engage in civil discourse in what I'm afraid has become an increasingly polarized nation. And many of us are dismayed at the extent to which intelligent discussions on complex issues can seemingly no longer be held without the kind of hysterical acrimony that only serves to harden positions and make compromise impossible. Let us remember that colleges and universities of all organizations must remain forums for open and respected discussion of controversial issues. We are all part of a learning community, and much of our learning comes from each other. Respect for the opinions of others, even when we strongly disagree with them, must be a cornerstone of our campus community. One cautionary note, however, the United States is a wonderful country, and one of the best things about this nation is the extent to which, if you fail, you can always start over. But regaining your personal reputation for honesty and integrity, however, is not so easy. So avoid the temptation to cheat or plagiarize others' work as you pursue your studies. This is the place where you will begin to build your reputation for honesty and personal integrity that you will carry for the rest of your lives. And you will have other important decisions to make as well. Now that you are on your own, your choices as to your use of alcohol and drugs will be among them. And I encourage you to steer away from illegal substances of any kind. You will also be in a position to observe friends who may struggle with depression or show worrisome changes in their behavior. And I encourage you to contact your resident assistant or the RIT Counseling Center in such cases. We are all members of the RIT family, and we all need to work together if our community is to flourish as a community of learning and opportunity for all of us. The faculty and staff at RIT are here to support you in this journey, and I encourage you to take advantage of all that they have to offer you. And also, and I mean this, please feel free to contact me directly should you feel that there are ways that we may serve you better. I will look forward to watching your progress and celebrating your achievements. And finally, go Tigers. Hello, I'm Margot Dayton, and I'm from Japan, New York. Parents and families, thank you for being here to support your student. 
We were once in their shoes and used our experience to plan what we hope is an awesome welcome. We hope that you found the day to be helpful and informative. When you return home, please take a few minutes to complete our online family program evaluation. Watch your email for a link to the survey. Your feedback is important to future orientation programs. Again, welcome. We're glad you're here. Hello, I'm Erica Laskawa, and I'm from Buffalo, New York. Our student program, which began this morning and continues through Sunday, is filled with presentations and events to assist new students in their academic and social transition to the RIT community. The programs include Academic Advising and Academic Day, College Life 101, Living and Learning Together, We Are RIT, a picnic and carnival for all new students, Lighting the Way, a welcome ceremony for RIT women, a Get Involved Fair, and Culture Con. Orientation activities also include free entertainment each night and will conclude with a bang on Sunday with our annual fireworks display. All of these activities will enable your student to meet and connect with other new and returning students and prepare them for the year ahead. Hello, I'm Kristen Hennessy and I'm from Buffalo, New York. Throughout orientation, students will be in small groups led by an orientation assistant who they met this morning and spent the day with. Selected through a highly competitive process, the orientation assistants are well-trained upperclassmen students whose primary responsibilities are to assist new students in their adjustment to RIT to help them feel more comfortable on campus before they start classes on Monday. Hello, I'm Josh Vickerson, and I'm from New Gloucester, Maine. To conclude the convocation for new students and families, please stand for the RIT alma mater as printed on the inside cover of your program and led by 8-beat measure and deaf sign performers Byron Evans, Shaley Fogelberg, Jonathan Peterman, and Nick Shaw. After the alma mater, the platform party will recess down the center aisle. Please remain seated until they have reached the back of the facility. Thank you again for joining us today.